Okay, we're coming to you late, but we're gonna do this now anyway, since I said I was gonna do this, and welcome to my Friday Night Smackdown review, Black Friday slash whatever Thanksgiving special they're doing on this show tonight, as they kicked it off with WWE Champion Randy Orton asking him what happened last Sunday about the whole Big Show thing and how he could have done it on his own. He didn't really need the authorities' help. Even if they came by ringside, he thought they kind of messed it up a little. And they pretty much asked him about the whole John Cena challenge and what is he thinking, what is he going to do about it, and what happened last Monday. <coughs> yeah, he pretty much asked him what he was going to do then and stuff. Because he kind of questioned the authority and everything, um, Randy Orton, and see what's going to happen at TLC when he becomes the Undisputed Champion, as he calls himself now. So he's going to become the new Undisputed Champion. Uh, pretty much came out of the first match of the night, Curtis Axel against Mark Henry. Mark Henry won, World Strong Slam, pretty much much of a squash match, him and Long Langston out there. Mostly would likely become a tag team now, even though Big Langston just won the Intercontinental Championship. Um, also in the back, pretty much it was Thanksgiving, and I guess they were in the back doing a food eating contest. I guess Tyus O'Neal were a great colleague, so Tyus O'Neal was going to go against uh, Antonio Cesaro tonight. Uh, the Matadores went against the Plymouth Rockers. Well, the Matadores won, beat the Plymouth Rockers 3MB, so they won that match. Even they keep giving 3MB some type of new gimmick every week, especially a holiday one. Uh, Bruce Clay was pissed in the back, kind of, after he pretty much let Xavier Woods borrow the dancers and his music and stuff. But now he blames him for being a copycat and pretty much um, saying he said you could use this and he pretty much gave himself a bad name and everything. So I guess Curtis, I was wondering if, Curtis, if um, Bruce Clay is actually going to get legitimately pissed about this. And I guess he really did get pissed at Xavier Woods about stealing his music and the Funkadactyls. And pretty much our truth and Xavier Woods doing just tons of funk, tons of funk one. Pretty much, um, <clears throat> Prim Brothers Clay, uh, jumped on top of, um, Xavier Woods winning the match, pretty much dancing, even though the others didn't really want to dance. I guess Brothers Clay may be turning heel now, so we'll see about that. Most likely he's going to turn heel. Antonio Cesaro went against uh, Titus O'Neil, which pretty much this match, oh god, it didn't really end off with anything. Pretty much Darren Young getting the ring and attacking for Cesaro throughout the swing. And then um, pretty much he puked on JBL's hat, even though for some stupid reason, who blocks out throw up? Why are they blocking out even though he's like he never really even threw up? Then he threw it on Michael Cole, which was something on him. And then he threw up on Zeb Coulter and threw up on his own, which someone may be throw up, even though I thought it was fake throw up. He was throwing out. So it didn't make much sense. Sorry, people. A little drowsy. But pretty much, um, they did. It was almost like the segment they did years ago with Booker T puking on Cole. They were Booker T and them, at least Booker T had more puke coming out of his mouth. Now these small little chunks trying to throw up on everybody. I don't even think the crowd really believe it because I think they were kind of too quiet during it. That whole segment and why some type of throw up for Thanksgiving was going to happen. The tag team titles on the line, the Shield went against Gordon and Cody Rhodes. Pretty much Rhodes and them were also to pick up the win. It was a really long match, I must say. Pretty much about to hit the crossroads on Rollins, but then Dean Ambrose got in the ring after he was on commentary attacking them. And then CM Punk came out with a chair, started hitting anybody with it until Vicky Guerrero says it's now a six man tag. And pretty much as they brawled again, uh, the Wyatts came out and watched until CM Punk get his tag. The Wyatts tag guards and Cody Rhodes. The Usos came out, and then Rey Mysterio came out. Pretty much Vicky Guerrero again turning this into an eight man tag. So with this eight man tag, 
was about to go down. It pretty much happened. And CM Punk and then picked up the win after 619 and then GTS on Rowan. Punk got out the win and beat won the match. So really good for him. Even though these lines were really long. Sorry, that lines were really long. Even though um, really long. They took up the whole hour anyway for the entire tag. They pretty much started with a tag team match. And then somehow turned to an eight man tag. I was like Teddy Long out there, but it pretty much lasted a very long day. I guess it was a, sorry, not a long day, uh, a long hour. I'm sorry, I'm getting my words mixed up a little. People pretty much a long hour and everything for that entire match. You know, it turned from a tag team match to a 16 match, then a 12 man tag match. But uh, pretty much CM Punk and them celebrating in the ring, and pretty much just said that'll be the end of this review. Really quick one right here. Comment, subscribe. You know it's me. It's me, the HWOD. Coming with the news and reviews. You know I am. You know what I do. It's not, you know it is. You know what went down. We done this review of Friday Night Smackdown. <coughs> so we'll see you then later. Okay. And let's hope you got some really good deals tonight and today on Black Friday. I'm out of here. I'll see you guys later. Peace.